Now, it's time for Wayne Brittenden's counterpoint. Ten days ago in New York, very interestingly, a federal judge ruled against a controversial provision in the National Defence Authorization Act, the NDAA. Judge Catherine Forrest agreed that Section 1021 was unconstitutional in that it might be used to indefinitely detain anyone deemed to be a threat, including protesters traditionally protected by the First Amendment. The lawsuit was brought by a group of journalists, academics and activists, including Noam Chomsky, Daniel Ellsberg and former New York Times reporter Chris Hedges. Less than 24 hours after Judge Forrest permanently enjoined Section 1021, the Obama administration filed an appeal. In his counterpoint this week, Wayne Brittenden looks at this provision in the NDAA, which is little known not only in New Zealand but also in the United States. Good morning, Chris. You're right to say that there hasn't been much mainstream coverage of the NDAA or the present legal drama around it, yet the implications of this legislation are pretty enormous. It's going to essentially place domestic terrorist investigations into the hands of the military, paving the way for indefinite detention without trial for anyone, including American citizens, as long as the government calls them terrorists. While the language of the Act's vague, suggested amendments that would have expressly exempted American citizens, or those captured on American soil, were firmly rejected. The Sixth Amendment guarantees the right to trial, while the NDAA would allow the government to lock up any citizen that it deems to be a terrorist, without proving its case to an independent judge, and for the lifespan of a potentially endless war on terror. It's argued that might affect an American journalist who meets with and reports on individuals connected to organizations considered terrorist by the government, consequently preventing well-informed national debate. In the court hearing, government attorneys repeatedly refused to define their key terms, associated forces, material support, and independent journalism. Judge Forrest asked where the line was between journalistic reporting and propaganda, what independent actually meant, and who's going to decide. In some ways, the National Defense Authorization Act reinforces the status quo established under the Bush administration in the Patriot Act, also supported by Barack Obama. The Patriot Act gave the government broad new powers in the war on terror. The NDAA expands on these. Certainly, it raises important questions about the role of the military in law enforcement and the power it gives future presidents. If the act had been introduced under a Republican presidency, there's little doubt that there would have been spirited opposition from the Democrats. Under a Democratic presidency, there's been an almost deafening silence. What the NDAA has done is to separate people who are political from those who are merely party political. Most liberal Democrats and neoconservative Republicans are united in their support. It's the libertarian voices from the further left and the further right who have been vocal in their dissent. On the left, Democrat Russ Feingold and independent Senator Bernie Sanders, who calls himself a socialist. The far-right libertarian Republicans, like Rand Paul, have virtually identical objections to the act. Take one magazine's coverage. It urged President Obama to veto the NDAA when it was passed by the Senate and challenged the government to either uphold the freedoms enshrined in the Constitutional Republic or, quote, scrap the entire project in the name of security as we wage endlessly this futile, costly, and ultimately self-defeating war on terror, unquote. That was Forbes, a right-wing business journal but it was left to one of the plaintiffs of the case, Chris Hedges, to warn that totalitarian systems always begin with changes to the law. Thank you for that, Wayne. Very interesting. And following up from that, I have two guests who are both plaintiffs in this case against the Obama administration of the National Defense uh, Authorization Act's Section 1021. Chris Hedges, is a the aforementioned Chris Hedges, is a Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist, a former foreign correspondent for the New York Times and author of several books, including The Death of the Liberal Class and the newly published Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt, in collaboration with Joe Sarko. 
And Tangerine Bolan is the founder and executive director of Revolution Truth, a global organization concerned with open government and freedom of expression. Her articles have appeared in The Guardian and other publications. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Can I start with you, Chris? I mean, given the these provisions in Section 1021, why has there been so little coverage in the mainstream media, and the more so in an election year? Because these provisions have bipartisan support. The bill was sponsored by Carl Levin, uh, Senator Carl Levin, a Democrat, and Senator John McCain, a Republican. Uh, it was backed by the Obama White House uh, when... Uh, Diane Feinstein of the House uh, sought to insert a provision exempting American citizens, but she was rebuffed. Um, and unfortunately, uh, political debate in this country, uh, as Dorothy Parker once said of Katherine Hepburn's emotional range as an actress, ranges from A to B. Uh, and if you step outside the, those very narrow parameters, and one can see it, in the very partisan cable channels uh, like Fox and MSNBC, uh, you have no voice. Uh, you can spin the court gossip one way uh, as long as it's funneled back into the Republican Party, or you can spin it another way as long as it's funneled back into the Democratic Party. Uh, but to challenge uh, real power, which of course is corporate power, and the rise of the security and surveillance state, uh, gets you pushed out of the mainstream. Really? So even a newspaper like the New York Times or the Washington Post would uh, would balk at going big on this? Well, the Times was rather slow to cover it. Uh, I will say in their defense, when Judge Forrest issued a permanent injunction, uh, they did cover it uh, extensively, and uh, they've written two editorials supporting her decision. Washington Post, by the way, wrote an editorial denouncing her decision. Um, uh, but that, you know, is limited to print journalism. Uh, the airwaves, as far as I know, have have uh, have not touched it at all. Is there? I mean, does this owe it's owe something to the sense of nationalism that enabled the Patriot Act to be passed without a great deal of dissent? Are we seeing the same thing here again? Well, the Patriot Act is sort of the least of it. Uh, we've had a series of legislative measures that have just stripped away our most basic constitutional rights. Obama's assault on civil liberties is actually worse than the assault carried out by George W. Bush. Obama has refused to restore habeas corpus. He has interpreted, uh, many people feel, incorrectly. The 2001 Authorization to Use Military Force Act has given him the right to order the assassination of U.S. citizens. And, of course, I'm speaking of the Yemeni cleric, Anwar al -Laki. He has used the Espionage Act, which is sort of equivalent to a Foreign Secrets Act, to shut down whistleblowers within the government. That, of course, is not how the Espionage Act was designed to be used, uh, but it's quite effectively uh, made... Uh, any investigation into government activities, including government corruption, government malfeasance, impossible, as any investigative reporter in the country will tell you, uh, even on background, government officials will no longer talk to you. Obama supported the FISA Amendment Act, which retroactively made legal what under our Constitution had traditionally been illegal, the warrantless wiretapping, monitoring, and eavesdropping of tens of millions of Americans, and we now know that all our personal information has been stored out in supercomputers in Utah. And finally, the National Defense Authorization Act, which in Section 1021 overturns 200 years of domestic law and empowers the military to carry out domestic policing. Uh, 